often the researchers find out this problem that what is the appropriate sample size for my study what is the size of the sample which i can use to generalize the results on the population which i am going to study so the answer depends on number of factors including the purpose of your study the population size risk of selecting a bad sample and the allowable sampling error so as per Miollis and Mishner 1976 apart from the purpose of the study and population size there are three more criteria which the researcher should pay special attention to while determining the appropriate sample size that is the level of precision the level of confidence or risk and the degree of variability in the attributes being measured so level of precision also refers to as the sampling error it is the range in which the true value of the population is estimated to be and it is often expressed in percentage terms that is plus minus 5% so for example if a researcher finds out that 70% of the students in the sample have adopted a recommended practice of submitting the assignment with a precision rate of plus minus 5% then the researcher can conclude that between 65% to 75% of the students in the population have adopted the practice so this is the interpretation of level of precision and it is also known as the margin of error the next one is confidence level which is also known as risk level it is based on central limit theorem which means that when a population is repeatedly sampled the average value of the attributes obtained by those samples is equal to the true population value and it is also expressed in percentage points for example 95% so if a 95% confidence level is selected then the researcher is confident that 95 out of 100 samples will have the true population value within the range of precision he has specified so if 95% confidence level is selected so this is the normal distributed curve where this is the population mean so it means that 95% of the sample means within the two standardized deviations so these are the deviations these are the black uh, shaded region and both of the black shaded region represents that the sample you obtain does not represent the true population value so the pop, the sample mean should fall into this area that is the white shaded area okay so this is the area as per the 95% confidence level so your sample should fall into this area okay the next one is degree of variability and it refers to the distribution of attributes in the population the more heterogeneous a population the larger the sample size is required and in case of homogeneous population or the less variable population the smaller sample is required okay so you have to pay a special attention to this note that a proportion of 50% indicates a greater level of variability then either 20% or 80% why because in 20% if you take the bifurcation 20% of the students are following the practice and 80% does not so the maximum majority 80% does not follow the practice in this case 80% of the students follow the practice and 20% does not so the majority 80% follow the practice so in the both the cases the majority is 80% in this case it is not following in this case it is following but in case of 50% proportion it means that half of the sample items does not follow the recommended practice 50% does 50% does not so it has the greater amount of variability so in case of 0.5 variability a more conservative sample size is determined that is the sample size may be larger than if the true variability of the population attributes were used so on a safer side researchers usually use 0.5 variability because this is the maximum variability and after using this their sample size will always be higher than the actual variability of the population attribute if it was used okay now what are the strategies for determining the sample size so the first one is you can use the entire population as sample that is the census for small population 
it is usually consider when you have lots of money and time because it is usually expensive and time uh time uh, consumable so it is usually preferred when the population size is 200 or less the other approach is that you can use the same sample size as of the studies which have already done on the same topic of your research that you are going to do so you can use the literature review in your discipline and then it can provide you a guidance about the typical sample size sizes that the other studies have used so that you can use the same sample size or the same approach or you can use the published datas so there are various published tables which are available as per different authors formula so you can uh, recommend any of the published tables and you have to pay attention that there are certain assumptions on the basis of which these published tables are made but the usually assum usual assumptions are that the recommended sample size reflects the number of obtained resources and not the number of questionnaires that you have sent to the people so you should receive the recommended sample responses from the respondents and the attributes measured are normally distributed so this is one of the sample that you can see that this is the published table as per yemen's 1967 formula where first column is the size of population and this is the sample size as per the different precision rate that is plus minus 3% plus minus 5% plus minus 7% and plus minus 10% so you can use the available published tables then you can use the formulas in order to calculate the sample size so these two cochrane formula and yemen formula are the most widely used formulas there are many more formulas available so you can refer them but cochrane and yemen are the most widely used and there is one more formula for sample size for the mean or the proportion which we all also discuss so as per cochrane's formula this is considered especially when the population is very large or infinite so in case the population is very large so this is the formula where n0 is the sample size z square z value can easily found in the z table at a given confidence level and you can just take a square of that value p is the estimate proportion of an attribute that is present in the population q is 1 minus p and e square is the desired level of precision or the margin of error so suppose this is the example assume that there is a larger population and you don't even know the variability in the proportion so on a safer side you are taking the proportion as to be 0.5 because this has the maximum variability and furthermore you are assuming as to be the 95% confidence level and plus minus 5% precision okay so you can simply substitute the values into this formula when you substitute this you will get the value as 385 students this 1.9 Six is the z value at 95% confidence level of two intervals. This you can easily find in the z table. And after substituting the values, so this is you can round off the value. So 385 student sample size is required in order to estimate the larger population, that is infinite population. The other Cochrane formula. in order to correct it as per the finite population is this where n is the reduced sample size this is the initial obtained sample size when the population is infinite and this capital n is the population size so for example now you know that the students adoption of the recommended practice is going to affect only 5000 students so you now you know the population size n and you have already calculated n0 that is 385 now you can easily substitute the values and this is the 358 students is the now reduced sample size because you know the population now in case you don't know it then the population size is 385 in case you know the exact size of the population then this is the reduced sample size which you can use in order to generalize the results to the entire finite population that is 5000 in this case then the next formula is yemen's formula and it is more simplified formula in order to calculate the sample sizes in case of finite population it means when you know the population in advance so this is the formula 
where n is sample size, capital N is population size and E is the level of precision or the margin of error. So this is the same example we are using. Now we will just substitute the value. So 5000 divided by 1 plus 5000 into precision rate we have assumed as to be 5% only. So 371 students. So in case of Cochrane, the result was 358 students and as per Yemen, it is 371 students in case of finite population. Okay. Now there is one more formula that you can use that formula for the sample size for the mean. And in case of mean, this is the formula where this n is sample size, this z is the z value, this is the population variance and this is the level of precision okay you can use this formula directly but the major disadvantage associated with this formula is that we generally don't know the population variance right because its estimate is usually not available sample size can vary widely from one attribute to another because each is likely to have a different variance we don't know about the actual attributes of the population right the so sample size is going to affect badly because we don't know the variances associated with each attribute. Because of these problems, the sample size for the proportion is frequently preferred. And this is form the formula for proportion where P stands for the proportion. Okay, so you can also use this formula along with Yamins and Conkren formula. You can use all the three formulas together and you can take the maximum sample size. Or you can use any of these as per the relevance of your study okay so these are the formulas which i i have for you guys i can also discuss about the rule of thumb which is usually preferred among the researchers that in case the variables required in the study are 10 so you can multiply this with 10 so 100 sample size is adequate for your study but in case you are multiplying this with 20 that is 10 variable into 20 then the sample size is the best for your study okay so always analyze the variables with which you are going to obtain the data for your research and you can just multiply the number of variables with 10 or with 20 whatever the case and you can take the sample size for that there are also various rules regarding to the statistical analysis for example in case you are going to do the factor analysis there are, there are certain authors which have recommended the different kind of uh, minimum sample size requirements similarly in case you are doing the qualitative research in that case the sample size is much lower as compared to the quantitative uh, research so always read the literature review in your discipline in order to get an idea about the sample sizes which are usually taken by the researchers okay don't just follow the formulas blindly always do a proper literature research in order to get an idea and then you can use these formulas and these rule of thumb in order to find out the appropriate sample size which is manageable from your end because too much and much lower both are very hazardous for your study so always take the best approach all the best students thank you so much for watching this video and in case you like it then please hit the like button and also share with your friends and with your colleagues and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you